This video is going to talk about reduction formula and how it ties into different sections of trigonometry. I hope you guys are ready. In the last video, we talked about quadrants. We talked about the fact that there are four quadrants. We also talked about which trig ratio is positive for each of those four quadrants. We also talked about the equations or the formula for each of those quadrants as well. Now, this video, as we said, is going to be talking about reduction formula. Now, we needed that as a background for you to understand this properly. The basic concept of reduction formula is transforming values from your second, your third, and your fourth into the first quadrant. So let's dive into it. From the last video, we talked about quadrants. We talked about the equations of quadrants and what each quadrant represents. Now, we, this is very important in understanding reduction formula. Now, the first thing you need to understand about reduction formula is, as we know from the first quadrant, that theta is less than 90 degrees. Now, the goal of reduction formula is to make each quadrant, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4, and change them into quadrant 1. So we want to make 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, 360 minus theta, and reduce them into theta. Now it doesn't matter if you're working with sine, you're working with cos, you're working with tan, we want to change each and every one of these trig ratios into sine, cos, or tan theta. To change from the other quadrants into the first, we understand the trig ratio itself wouldn't change. However, the sign of the trig ratio could. What I mean by that is whenever I'm changing from the second quadrant into the first quadrant, since we said the second quadrant sign is positive, it means that if I substitute sign 180 minus theta, it could automatically change into sine theta. However, if I make it cos 180 minus theta, because only sine is positive in the second quadrant, it means that this cos would be negative cos theta. The same thing is also true when I put in 180 minus theta. I expect my answer to be negative tan theta. If we try another example, let's say we try out sine 360 minus theta. From this here, we understand that 360 minus theta represents the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So for that reason, we're still going to have sine theta, but we will have negative sine theta. It's the same thing that happens if I have tan. I would also have tan theta, but instead of me getting a positive answer, I will get a negative answer because cos is the only positive trig ratio in the fourth quadrant. Now that you have a better understanding of how to use reduction formula, let us use actual values and see how they hold up. So what happens if you have actual values? So if we have something like sine 300, how do we reduce this using the reduction formula? Now the first thing you always do is to look at which quadrant does it fall under. Now we understand that 300 falls between 270 and 360. So that means that it's in the fourth quadrant. So the first step is to determine the quadrant it falls under. The next step is to rewrite the value we have into the equation of the fourth quadrant. And the equation of the fourth quadrant is 360 minus theta. We'll rewrite 300 in 360 minus theta, meaning that it's gonna look like this. As you can see, we have 360 minus 60, which also gives us this value for 300 that you have over there. Then the final step is to either have it to be a positive or have it to be a negative. Now, since sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, this is just going to be negative sine 60 degrees. And that there would be your final answer. If there's a possibility of simplifying sine 60, you do that or else you can just leave it like that. Let us try out one more example and 220. Now 220 falls in the third quadrant because it falls between 180 and 270. 
the next thing we write is we write 220 into the equation of the third quadrant and now we give it a sign since tan is positive in the third quadrant this will just be written as tan 40 and that's it so this is the concept of reduction whenever you want to reduce anything the first step would be to determine which quadrant it is the second step is to rewrite the value into the equation of the quadrant and the third step is to assign a sign right is it going to be negative is it going to be positive then we just bring it back to the first quadrant that's exactly how you use reduction formula now that you have a better understanding of how reduction formula works let us try out an example where you have to use reduction formula to simplify your question. So these are two examples of using reduction formula. And we're going to use exactly what we just talked about to answer this question. 3 cos 180 plus x times sine 360 minus x over sine 360 plus x times cos 180 minus x. Okay, so let's start simplifying. So looking at all this here, we understand that 180 plus x was in your third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, cos is negative. And that's why we see we have a negative there. And we see this here, 360 minus x is in your fourth quadrant. That's why we have negative sine x over here, because sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. We have down here 360 plus x. Now 360 plus x is in the first quadrant. So since this is in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the first quadrant, that's why we have a positive there. And this is 180 minus x. 180 minus x is in the second quadrant and cos is negative, right? Negative in the second quadrant. That's why we see a negative there. So all we just had to do here was multiply. And notice I have negative times negative. That's where we have this positive from. Then the rest becomes 3 cos x sine x. And down here, this is a positive, that's a negative. That's why I brought out that negative out there. And all I just have to do is cross cancel. The cos can cancel the cos. The sign can cancel the sign. And all I'll be left with is negative three. And that is the simplification of this particular question over here. And the second question here says cos 240 times sine 315 times time 120 over sine 150 times 330 cos 225. Now for the first one we have over here, we understand that 240 is in the third quadrant and the equation of the third quadrant is 180 plus x. So we are going to rewrite this in that format. This one here we have 315 is in the fourth quadrant. We will write 315 as the equation of the fourth quadrant. We have this here, which is tan 120. We will write tan 120 in the equation of the second quadrant because 120 is in the second quadrant. Then we have 150 here is in the second quadrant also. We will write 150 in the equation of the second quadrant. And 330 is in the fourth quadrant. We will write that in the equation of the fourth quadrant. Finally, 225 is in the third quadrant and we write cos 225 in the third quadrant. So now all we'll just need to do is bring everything back into the first quadrant and assign sign depending on if in that quadrant your sign, your cos, your tan is positive or is it negative. So since this is in the third quadrant, we understand that in the third quadrant cos is negative. So we write it as sine is negative in the fourth quadrant so is tan negative in the second quadrant sine is positive in the second quadrant tan is negative in the fourth quadrant and cos is also negative in the third quadrant 
in one of our previous videos we talked about special angles now we are trying to simplify this and usually in questions like this it normally says simplify this without the use of a calculator you will notice a trend in this question that every single one of this are special angles so the next thing i'm just going to do is change every single thing to the equivalent value of your special angle So from here, we have a negative here because it is negative times negative times negative. It will give you a negative value. And from here, this is positive times negative times negative, which will give you a positive value. That's why we see no sign here. Now, all we just need to do over here is cross cancel, right? We actually see some things are equal. In the numerator, we see there's half and there's also half there. So that can cancel out. And we also see this root 2 over 2 and this is root 2 over 2. That will cancel out. So all you'll be left with is negative root 3 over... 1 over root 3. I could rewrite that as negative root 3 divided by 1 over root 3. Which is the same thing as writing negative root 3 times root 3, which is equals to negative 3. And that there will be your final answer. So this is exactly how you can use reduction formula to simplify values that has number in it. While this one here is the way you can use reduction formulas when you're only given equations or your formulas for each of your quadrants. Now that we've talked about reduction formula, and the thing with reduction formula is that it's interconnected. So the reduction formula can be used with different parts of trick. The next video is going to be focusing on negative angles and how it works. You can check out our other videos on trick in the description below. And on your way out, please do not forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Bye.